to have your Bibles with you on today, would you please turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. We will begin our reading in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse, and read only the 12th and 13th verse. Again, it's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verses 12 through 13. Only two verses of scripture, but we're going to work it out anyway. If you have it, everyone in the house of the Lord, say amen. The Bible reads here in verse 12, Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Two words put together, don't get no better than that. But God <laughs> is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. My contribution today with the help of the Lord to this great church of God's good looking people. It is a simple message of hope. I just want to encourage somebody in here today. So I come by here today to preach to the heart of this great congregation of God's good looking people and tell you that it does not matter what it is that you're going through. You can handle it. So why don't you give two or three people beside you a high five and tell them you can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle it. Touch somebody real good where they can feel it and tell them you can handle it. You can handle it. Now why don't you give God a hand and clap of praise all over the building. Let's give him some praise. Let's praise him like we love him. Praise him like we need him. Let's praise him like we truly know that we can't make it without him. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath. Uh, woo! My God, we in the right house today. <laughs> you may be seated in the name of the Lord if you can. Praise God. In order for me to somehow bridge the atmosphere that I feel in my spirit with the content of this text... I've got to first make sure that everybody under the sound of my voice come to the realization that there isn't anything that's too hard for my God. I'm going to say it again because I, I don't know if you believe that right now, but I want to tell somebody, ain't nothing too hard for God. I don't know exactly what you've been dealing with and what the devil has been reverberating in your ears. But I've come by here to tell somebody that my God has all power. Yeah, He is the all-seeing God. He is the all-knowing God. He is the immutable, everlasting, almighty God of all eternity. The Bible tells us that in the beginning, God created and that is as far as I'll go because I ain't going to hold you all day here today but in that little portion of scripture that was more than what any idol could ever do. Within that tiny little portion of scripture was more than what the Buddha can ever do. Matter of fact Buddha cannot even stand on the same platform as our God. Ah, There is no God in Buddha. Any God that I can pick up, any God that I can carry and put on a shelf or in a closet somewhere it's not a call at all. Well, that ain't gonna help me today. That's all right. That little portion of scripture was more than what Harry Krishna could do. That little portion of scripture was more than what the Allah or the Prophet Muhammad could ever do. That little tiny portion of scripture was more than Brahma, Ganesha, Vishnu, the Tao, or any of the God of any other age could ever do. I'm glad today that I know that there is but one God. <laughs> yes, I'm glad today to know him. <laughs> I'm glad today to know him by name. <laughs> Y'all sit down, be good. Give me about two minutes here. Uh, I, 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 I may be the only one that thinks kind of crazy like this, but... I, I think sometimes how I could have been left all by myself. Uh, have you ever stopped and wondered and thought about how you could be one of those deceived people out there? 
who, who literally knock on doors at 10 o'clock on Saturday mornings with the watchtower in their hand. Do you ever think about how you could be one of those people who believe that Jesus was the archangel Michael who was elevated to the sonship of God? Can you imagine, do I ever stop and think about how you could be one of those sitting in the kingdom hall somewhere believing that there are 144,000 going to heaven? I've got to tell somebody that I'm glad tonight for the revelation of the mystery of who he is. I'm glad tonight to know him. I'm glad tonight that I know him by name. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. I wish I had some help up in here today. Whew. I'm glad that God chose to reveal himself to me. I'm glad today that I don't have to bow down before a six-armed blue goddess who has a ruby in the middle of her forehead named Vishnu. I'm exceeding glad because I don't have to attempt to try to remember the over 1,000 gods in Hinduism. I'm so glad on today that I know that the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, one in verse 4 uh, that before the foundation of the world uh, we were chosen in him to be holy and without blame uh, so that leads me to understand uh, yes uh, that God already knew the choice that I would make uh, when somebody came up to me and said Daniel you got to understand uh, you are not saved by shaking a preacher's hand uh, you're not saved by signing your name on on a roster roller. You're not saved by the amount of tithe you may pay. You're not saved because of who your parents or your grandparents' last name is. You're not, uh, y'all ain't gonna help. I, I'm about to preach myself to death in here. You're not saved about any of that mess. Ah, oh, God already knew the choice that I would make when somebody told me, Daniel, you must understand. Ah, oh, you got to be baptized in the matchless almighty awesome, all-powerful, immutable name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Daniel, you've got to understand that you have to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now, 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 where I'm originally from, they literally have classes to teach people how to speak in tongues. Uh, ah, so that's the reason why sometimes uh, you may have somebody talking about E coming on a Honda and uh, Suzuki, Mitsubishi, and uh, E G E L L O C, college spelled backwards, or uh, uh, E K O C. That's code, boy. Get out of here. Ah, uh, uh, Sudoku. No, nah, that's a board game. Get on out of here. Y'all playing up in here. No, no, no. But somebody told me uh, that you have to speak in other tongues, uh, not as some one teaches you but as the spirit gives the utterance I'm glad today to know that God knew the choice that I would make when I heard the gospel so I'm here today to tell somebody that the God that we serve he has more power than any of the God the Bible says that he is and I wish I had an organ or rag I may go up a little bit but uh, he is I feel like preaching in here. He is the king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. And beside him, there is no savior. Beside him, there is no other God. I looked to my left and there was no one there. I looked to my right and there was none mighty to him. I'm glad today to know that he's gone all by him. Hey, 
Woo! I feel it in here. Ah, yes, I wish I had somebody that believed what I was telling you today. I wish I had some money that believed that the God that you and I serve has all the power to deliver you uh, out of anything all by himself. Uh, he ain't going to give over no power uh, to a Jehovah Junior uh, to do his bid. No, uh, he's God all by himself. Uh, I know that you may be neck deep in a situation uh, that caused you to feel the weight of the world on your shoulders. Uh, you may have come up in here today uh, and it's hard for you to lift up your hands uh, because you cannot let go uh, of whatever it is that's bothering you. Uh, you may have come up in here today uh, and it's hard for you uh, to open up your mouth and praise him with the fruit of your lips because you have the bitter taste of the trial you just went through still resting on your tongue you may have come up in here today and it's hard for you to dance because you feel the chains of the present tribulation challenging your trust in God I've come to tell you the devil is a liar the devil is a give your name a high five and say the devil is a liar He's a liar. And my big mama will say the truth ain't in him. Ah, yeah, that's country. Y'all don't know nothing about that. He's a liar and the truth ain't in him. I know that it may be rough right now. And I know that it may be real hard right now. But I know a God. I know the God who's well able. 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 Able, able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or ever think according to the power that works in you. You're more powerful than you think. You're more powerful than you realize. You got more authority than you know because of who's in us. Uh, my God. Uh, Y'all sit down. Please be good. Y'all like an apostolic. Uh, give me about uh, another minute and a half. Uh, uh, God, I've stopped by here uh, to simply tell somebody, uh, you can handle whatever you're going through, baby. Uh, you got this. Uh, you are an overcomer. Uh, and because you are of God, uh, you, have to, you have the power to overcome them. Uh, no matter what that them may be. Uh, it could be mama them. Uh, it could be daddy them. Uh, it could be auntie them. Uh, it could be boss and them. Uh, it could be supervisor and them. It could be the bank and them. It could be the finance and them. It could be your haters and them. It could be your frenemies and them. It could be your liars and them. It could be, oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. It could be your best frenemy and them. It could be the one that say you love you and them. But stab me behind your back and them. You can overcome them. Why? Why can I overcome? How can I overcome the? Oh, that's simple, baby. The Bible lets us know. I feel right good up in here today. That greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Why don't you look at your neighbor and tell him you can handle this? Ah, oh my God, I may just preach a little bit now. 
Can I preach it like I feel it in here? Can I talk to somebody, somebody, anybody Ah, for a few minutes about the awesomeness of the God that keeps the pressures from this life from being too great on little old me? Ah, can I tell you about the one who raised them in the balances and also makes sure that I come out on top every time? Ah, can I tell you who he is? The Bible says that God has given him a name ah, which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ah, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Ah, and it is because of him. It's because of this Jesus. Ah, it's because of his birth. It's because of his life. It's because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection that I'm able able to stand before all of you today and proclaim to you that neither is there salvation in any other name for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved I can't help but to stop and tell somebody else that the only reason why I have not given up yet. The only reason why I'm still standing today. The only reason why the devil can't kill me is because of the blood of Jesus. Ah, elbow your neighbor real good and say it's because of the blood. Ah, it's because of the blood. It's not by works of righteousness of which we all have done because our righteousness is as filthy rags. But thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Ah, thank God for that blood. I know it. It was the blood of Jesus. It wasn't for my good looks. Thank you for thinking it. But it was all because of the blood. Ah, I know I'm fly, but it wasn't because of my nice clothes. Ah, thank you for thinking it. But it's only because of the blood of Jesus. Ah, yes. I've known Oh, it feels like yes I've been hurt yes I've been knocked down yes I've experienced a tremendous amount of pain that I thought at the time was unbearable that I thought at the time was going to wipe me out that I thought at the time was going to take me out of here ah, I've been bruised and I've been damaged but thank God that his blood covering did not allow you or I to be destroyed I realize that it wasn't because of anything that I have done but it's only because of the blood of Jesus he shed his blood for me that I'm able to be here today It was his blood that protected me. It was his blood that healed me. It was his blood that saved me. It was his blood that protected me from hurt, horror, danger. It was his blood that delivered me from the hands of my enemies. It was his blood that set me free from the stain and the sin that kept me bound. I wonder if I have anybody in here that can testify with me that is only because of the blood of
is holy because of the blood of Jesus. Now that you are who you are, it's because of the blood of Jesus that was shed that you're able to be one in the number today. The old timers used to say it like this, for what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing but the blood of Jesus I'm here today because of Jesus we are going where we're going because of the blood of Jesus I still have my sanity because of the blood of Jesus I'll come to tell somebody today you can handle it 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 Ah, uh, yes. Why don't you find you somebody beside you and shake them like you're going to shake their wig off. Shake them like you're going to shake their dentures out. Shake them like you're going to shake their bobby pins loose. And tell them, shake out of it, baby. You can handle this. This ain't nothing for God. Y'all ain't shaking. Y'all ain't shaking. I, I want to see some sh I shake somebody. Shake somebody real good. Make sure they're alive in here today and say you can handle it you can handle it you can handle it y'all please be good sit down for a minute I asked for a minute and a half I'm gonna ask for about 30 more seconds watch this now the Bible said in our opening scriptural reference wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest you fall I may, I may lose a little bit right here, but it's all good. <laughs> Take heed lest you fall. I've got to push the pause button right here to let somebody in the house know uh, that you cannot make it by yourself. Oh no, you can't make it by yourself. You can't do this by yourself, baby. I know, I know you're grown and sexy. You got it all together. You, you know, you you think you got it. You're, you're the best thing since peanut butter and sliced bread. Ah, uh, you're not a bag of chips. You the whole package. I know, I know, I know. It's all good. But baby, you can't do this by yourself. Mm -mm. You can't do this by yourself. Ah, oh, God, you can't do it. You can't do it. I've got to tell you, ma'am, I've got to tell you, sir, that if any one of us, including myself, begin to pull ourselves back and start distancing ourselves from the church in the midst of any storm, we will create an island into ourselves, which will set us up for a disaster. Trust me when I tell you that it is a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> ah, because when you're in the storm, and I know a little bit of something, something about storms. I, I grew up in the Gulf Coast, man. And we, we had Rita, Ike, and all this. <laughs> I had almost $40,000 worth of damage done to my home during Rita. I, I know a little something, something about storms. <laughs> That's what we call them back in the sticks. Storms. They're not storms. That's for you dignified folk, but it's storms. Stones. Oh, uh, Rita was a bad stone. Ah, uh, yes. I know a little something about stone. And uh, when you're in the midst of the storm, ah, uh, you cannot, you cannot, you can hear me. You cannot uh, make any kind of uh, uh, decisions in the midst of a storm. It will set you up for a disaster because when you're in the storm, it's bumpy and it's turbulent and you're being tossed to and fro by the winds and the waves. It's real easy to become confused. I feel the Holy Ghost pushing me right here. Somebody needs to listen to me. Ah, When it's dark outside during the storm and you're getting turned about, your equilibrium is off a little due to the unexpected twist and 
and turns that comes with the storm. Ah, that the storm winds of life that brought your way. Listen to me. It is so important that you do not make any life altering decisions in the midst of a storm because you may think that you're standing up and making the right decision for you and yours. But the Bible says to take heed, my brother. Ah, because the decision that you are maybe about to make will be decision that may just ultimately cause you and your family to fall. That is the reason why, my brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul thought that it was so necessary for him to follow that statement with this. He said, and he declared to us that there hath no temptation that taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, oh, there's their words again. But 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 God, but God, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. What Paul was saying, if you didn't understand it, this is D. Walt version 101. What he was saying to us was is that there isn't a storm, there isn't a trial, there isn't a test, there isn't a temptation that you're going through right now that somebody else has not already been in. Yeah, he said that it's a common thing to man, which literally means that if somebody else has already been exactly where you are, it means that somebody else has already walked down the road you're traveling. It means that somebody else has already made it over to the other side. But Paul did not stop right there. He goes on to solidify his position by reminding you and I that our God will always be faithful faithful to us and he will never allow us to be tempted above which we are able to withstand because with every temptation it says that God will always 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 make a way of escape for his people this is the reason why having real apostolic church is so important this is the reason why real apostolic church is supposed to be different from everything else. This is the reason why we're not supposed to act like the world. This is the reason why we're not supposed to be like the world. This is the reason why we are not supposed to have relationships like the world where boys are kissing boys and it's okay and girls are kissing girls and it's okay and everybody doing whatever they want to do about doing with how big and bad they think they can do anything. Come on. We're not supposed to be like the world. This is the reason why holiness is important to the kingdom. This is the reason why separation from the world is priceless. Because you can't walk like, act like, live like, dress like, be like, have relationships like the world and then expect to escape from the world. God in his divine wisdom he placed his bride the church in the world huh, to be the way of escape for his people huh. that's the reason why I can't lay out of church huh. oh God even before I was pastoring I couldn't lay out of church huh. oh, when I was evangelizing I had a few days off on uh, Sunday off I would be in church still I, I couldn't lay out of church huh. I couldn't miss midweek service huh. I can't stay at home during revival huh. I don't know about you, but I got too many devils to fight. Then I sit at home and watch TV. I got too many devils to fight. I got too many haters to contend with than to stay at home. I got too many frenemies on my trail uh, that smile in my face uh, and talk about me behind my back uh, than to stay at home while church going on. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I can't stay at home. Uh, I need the church. Uh, I need the church. Uh, I, I, I need the church. 
I feel like preaching in here. I don't know about you today, but I can only speak for myself. But when I begin to sit back and think about the goodness, that's another country word, not goodness, but it's goodness. Think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. I can't help but to give him thanks. I can't help but to give him glory. I can't help but to give him honor because I remember where I was when the Lord found me all wrapped up in my mess. Crack cocaine in my pocket, ready to sell. About 10 dime bags of weed in my pocket, ready to sell. I remember from the time from 1988 to 1998, I was involved in a gang. 5 9 Hoover Crip, the number four man in a 600 strong group. Ah, gun toting over a lot of me. If I pointed at somebody, they took them out. I knew what it's like. Ah, when God found me all wrapped up in my mess, I was tore up from the floor. I thought I was big, bad, and the ugly. Ah, but when I came in contact with the God of all eternity, he showed me how small I really was compared to his goodness. That may not mean much to any some of you. Some of you may have been saved all your life. You may have never done anything wrong in your life. Use a lie because you just lied right there. The Bible says that we all have sinned. Your little cute little sin may not have been my little ugly sin, but sin is sin in the eyesight of God. So don't look flat eyed at somebody because they sin may be a little uglier than yours. You go on with your little cute little sin and think you're going to get away with it. But I thank God for his grace and his mercy that brought me out. I can't help but to give him glory if he only knew my real story and I ain't going to tell it because they're recording it but ah, yes if you really knew my real story ah, you wouldn't be able to look at me funny when I come into the house of God ah, everything I was doing God found me messed up so when I come into the church don't look at me funny when I begin to dance don't look at me strange when I preach as hard as I preach don't think it's for show it's because I remember where he brought me from I gave it everything I got back then so I'm gonna give it everything I got right now It looks like we got a church full of folk that done been through something. And you remember what God brought. Ah, I wish I had those that done been through something. Get out of your seat. Get out in the aisle and just give God a praise for where he's brought you. Praise him for bringing you out of it. Praise him for making a way for you. Praise him for protecting you. Praise him for making you to the person you are. Praise him for what he brought you out of. Praise him for where he's taking you. Praise him for every heartache. Praise him for every disappointment. Praise him for every misunderstanding. Praise him for every tear you had to cry. Praise him.
I think I'm done right here. <laughs> I'm done right here. Yes, I'm done right here. I got plenty more that I can preach. But I believe this is where God wants it right now. Some of you have been through a nightmare of a life. But God is turning your nightmare into a dream come true. If the devil could have killed you, he would have killed you when you were still out in the world. If the devil could have killed you, he'd have wiped you out when you were still on drugs. If the devil could have killed you, He'd have killed you when you was an alcoholic. If the devil could have killed He'd have killed you when you were on the dance floor. He'd have killed you when you were in the clubs. But thank God for grace and mercy that brought you to his house. I come to tell you, if he could not kill you then, he definitely can't kill you now. You can handle it. Seriously, seriously, think about it. If the devil couldn't kill you when you were in the world, and he's bringing junk in your life now that you're on God's side, why do we think that he's gonna win? That leads me to understand, even in a greater light, the reason why the Bible declares that no weapon yeah. that is formed against yeah. us will be able to prosper. Yeah. It won't work. It won't work. Why don't you grab the hand by the one standing beside you? And let's pray for one another for a moment right now. And, and while you're praying, telling them, no weapons. No weapons. No weapon formed against me. said he's gonna do he will stand by his word he will come through say oh god oh yeah he will stand by his word he
Come on, come on. I need the church to be sensitive right now. I feel like God, God is about to touch some in a very real supernatural way. Come on, come on. Come on. I need those who are sensitive to be sensitive to the spirit right now. God wants to heal. God wants to deliver. God wants to set free. God wants to fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. God wants to take the pressures off. You got to understand the day that you can handle whatever it is you're going through. You don't just have to take that. You just don't have to take it. Don't allow the devil to make you feel like you've got to sit there and take everything that he's dishing out. But no, 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 you don't have to take it. In one word, I know God, God will do what he said.
already filled one with the Holy Ghost and we have a couple people that are being baptized this morning let's rejoice with them
Jesus' name. Surely the presence of the Lord is the Lord. He's covering in his blood. Surely the presence. Surely the Lord. The redemption of a soul. filled another with the Holy Ghost. And we have another being baptized. people filled with the Holy Ghost. We have four people being baptized in Jesus' name this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is moving. Just entertain His presence. Rejoice in these. God's Spirit is in this house. There's a move of God happening in the church. There's revival happening. Turning sinners into saints of God is what the church is all about. God's going to be bringing all kinds of people in. He's going to be filling them. We're going to be baptizing them. We're going to teach them how to clean their life up and how to dress better and all that kind of stuff. But it all starts with people being touched by the power and the love of God. Aren't you glad for the love of God that touched your life when you were in need? In the name of Jesus, God's Spirit is here rich. 
If you need to go, I'll dismiss you. If you need to go, you can slip out quietly. Make sure you pick up your children at the Children's Center. But we have two more being baptized. If you're able to stay up toward the front here and rejoice with us. God's still moving. I also want to say congratulations to Brother Matt and Sister Stephanie. They're announcing their engagement today. And so make sure that you greet them. Congratulate them. If you need to go, you're dismissed in Jesus' name. But just stay. Those of you that can stay and linger and rejoice with us, let God touch and minister to one another in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. 